The SABC spokesperson William Tembo refuted the weekend newspaper report that it plans to cut its staff by up to 33%. These reports suggest that the retrenchments are part of the public broadcaster's turnaround strategy. Communications Workers Union Secretary General Aubrey Chabalala joins us now in studio. Good afternoon, Aubrey. Thank you so much for joining us on the SABC News Desk. Afternoon and to the listeners. Uh, Aubrey, let's yes. start off. I just want to garner your initial reaction to media reports that the SABC is cut um, jobs. Uh, how are you at the union digesting the news or receiving the news at this point? Well, when we received the news initially, we were shocked, but we have to verify the, what has been written. Yes. And uh, we are reassured that uh, there is similar position that we had since uh, January when uh, SAPC said it aborted uh, uh, its initial plan to to retrench workers. But also we've looked closely, very closely to the presentation made at the portfolio committee this week, yes. where there was a presentation made by the SAPC. There was no indication of a retrenchment of any workers. Uh, but what takes us aback is that uh, it seems like every weekend now, SAPC workers have to wake up to the news that their jobs is online. If it's not that, they are not paid. So it's, yes. it's a very troubling sum and it leads to staff demoralization. Yes, it's a very unsettling time for SABC staffers. Now, the national broadcaster, we heard earlier from the spokesperson, refute claims that these retrenchments are going to take place. Have you been in touch with the executive management today? We've been in touch, uh, not only with the executive, but with the minister. Yes. And uh, this coming week on Wednesday, we are going to meet at what we call a turnaround strategy workshop, yes. where we as Labour, we wanted to make a significant input. Amongst those is job retention, but also to create jobs. So we look at SAPC not as a platform to be a champion of retrenchment, but to be a champion of creating quality, sustainable jobs, because we have to look at a broader uh, turnaround strategy mm -hmm. that must involve a number of uh, stakeholders. Amongst them is your MTTA, which is another uh, yes. funding agency on the community radio stations and all of that. So we are saying that we have to look into the digitalization of uh, uh, SAPC by digital migration. That will enable SAPC to create more channels. Yes. In other words, um, SAPC can be a, a, a one broadcaster that will be creating yes, more because jobs. Because uh, the SAPC is constantly looking for bailouts, right? Uh, doesn't that suggest to you that the streams or avenues for making money or generating revenue is not working at this point? Absolutely. That's what we've been saying all along, that the funding model of SAPC is not working. Uh, we need to look at new ways and uh, Obviously, we have to look at the issues of OTTs, yes. and we are glad that uh, they spoke about it at the Pol uh, Parliament Portfolio Committee. We have to look at the digital digitalization in broadcasting so that we create those streams. So it, it's not going to be a one-day uh, matter. Mm. It's going to be a process. But if you look at SAPC generally, uh, most top radio stations come from SAPC. Yes. Uh, most uh, top uh, TV stations come from SAPC. So we wonder why is it not generating a sufficient profit compared to the private sector that is way below yes. SAPC and uh, that could also be closely attached now to the new debate that we want to advance in on the uh, adver advertisement scorecards because it's seemingly like uh, the, the advertisers put more money into private sector and sideline the public broadcaster which is something that we have to take it by head on. Mm. Uh, Aubrey I want to ask you how do you respond to those uh, who say that you as the union are also partly responsible for the financial over the financial burdens on the public broadcaster right now because the job cuts aim to save costs. Well, they are narrow-minded, to, to say it at least, uh, because... Uh, I read somewhere that you said this is lazy thinking. Tell me why. Absolutely lazy. Um, you, you look at SAPC, you have a number of freelancers that have ex work excessive hours, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, though SAPC needs more staff uh, instead of retrenching. So those are the people who have not looked at SAPC. They just look at numbers. And uh, the public broadcast, you can't look at numbers without looking at its mandate. Mm -hmm. So it has two prongs for uh, a type of a mandate. One to certify uh, the ICAS and the other one is the commercialized side. And there are those now who are also advancing that uh, perhaps some of the part of SAPC must be uh, sell, uh, sold out so that it can generate revenue. We also reject that. We think that SAPC can do very well, but there's concerted efforts to talk better about SAPC 
to reduce it to a, a institution that will never work so that those who stand to gain, particularly in the private sector, can start now to buy some assets at SAPC and improve their lifelines, whilst the nation will suffer at the end of the day. So, so we reject those. vindictive motives behind such reports? Is that your feeling? Absolutely. I would be very happy to see the, the, the journalists or the editors that have written the story. They must obviously give us the background of it, because so far so good. What has been read at Parliament, what we've interacted with the Minister, what we are discussing with the Executive of Management, including the meeting that is coming on Wednesday, has no indication of any reduction of staff. Instead, we are saying as Labour, there should be a space to create more jobs. Yes. Uh, when it comes to the worst case scenario and retrenchments, if, if they had to go, what kind of legal recourse uh, are available to workers? in that kind of scenario? Well, uh, there will be, of course, uh, the process of CCMA that will take place, but also retrenchments must be justifiable. Um, we, we have called for a staff audit. It has not been presented to us. Yes. We have said that every company, including the, the, the SOEs, has a responsibility to upskill and upgrade workers in terms of yes. moving to the uh, fourth industrial revolution. So if, if companies are failing to do that, so we'll obviously have to fight that head on. All right. We heard earlier from the SABC spokesperson saying that the skills audit is underway, Aubrey. When can SABC staffers expect any sort of feedback or outcomes from that report? Do we have any time frame in line? How long is it going to go on for? Six months, a year? Well, uh, according to SAPC itself, uh, at the time when they were initiating this plan, they said it will take around about a year. Uh, we, we want to know on Wednesday, of course, how far the process is, what is it there. But we also have to highlight this point, is that the, the skills audit is not about to assess how many people can be re retrenched, yes. but it's all about to say what skills do we need at SAPC, what is it that we have, where can we improve and where can we uh, in nature the talent that we have at SAPC. That's why we say, I mean, SAPC currently is employing. Uh, the, the last couple of months they've been employing. So no one can raise a finger and say that uh, there's a, a bloated staff or something of that nature. Mm. Uh, what's your feeling on how transparent or how impartial this kind of skills audit is at this point, Aubrey? Well, reasonably so. We, it can be argued that uh, for now it might not have to be transparent because of its sensitivity. Yes. We accept that. Yes. Uh, so we have not gone to, to that pace. That's why we fought so hard. I think we fought for us to be in the space where we can now start to engage on the turnaround strategy. Yes. Because that, those skills audit will inform the turnaround strategy. It is a futile exercise to have a turnaround strategy without knowing what capacity you have. So you'll be planning on, on thumb sucking. So ours is to be scientific. Ours is to engage with the, 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 the whatever that we have, the resources, the funding and so forth, so that we can move forward. Even to generate a new funding model, you have to be informed by the skills, you have to be informed by your future plans, so that you can be able to engage on this uh, turnaround strategy. CWU's uh, Aubrey Chabalala joining us in studio today. Thank you so much for sharing your invaluable insights with us on the SABC News Desk. Thank you very much.